Welcome to another episode of Indiana Jones, as per usual. Here you are. And uh, today we're gonna start something with the F1 Manager 22. I already played the game for one season to see how the, way the game works. But uh, let's play some seasons and see how they design the game. There are already some things that I think that are not uh, good or as good as I expected or maybe other players also expected. So let's jump uh, into it. Uh, from what I understand, the easiest teams to play would be Red Bull and Ferrari, since they are the best by far. Then you have the Mercedes, which uh, you, have, you can see here, for example, they tell you team rating, what, what is the rating. You, you are expected, for example, here to be third. With Red Bull and Ferrari, you are expected to be the champion, but as in the normal races, you also have a gap between these two teams, this one and then the rest. Uh, there you, ha you have a lot of money in the beginning. Uh, yeah, if you go to McLaren, for example, you're medium, you're expected to be fifth, which is a little bit unrealistic. Alpine, you're expected to be fourth, which is uh, kind of true, right? Especially with this god driver, according to some people. Alpha Tauri, you have uh, Aston Martin, season objective is to be 8th, a little bit optimistic based on how <laughs> the game was played. Williams, you're expected to be ninth. Obviously, all the teams are expected to be perhaps like one position higher than what they really are, because uh, Williams and Aston Martin are the worst teams by far, even though here you have a lot of resources and Williams doesn't. And the uh, long-term objective, you can see here, points contender, points contender, podium contender, it's a bit uh, <laughs> optimistic, constructors champion, podium contender, podium contender, right? Constructors champion. Well, anyway, what uh, what team should we, should we start with? Mm. Let's... Uh, let's start uh, with... Uh, Williams, for example, or with McLaren. I would like to start with a team that uh, actually goes, has like no pressure in the beginning, and then you can you can go forward. <coughs> so let's um, let's start with McLaren. Let's start with McLaren. Team. So name is gonna be. I don't know, Johnny Wonka. First time guidance disabled. If you're, it's the first time that you're playing, you can put enable. They will teach you how everything works over there. And yeah, let's start the game, shall we? So this is the main menu. You can put help if you forgot to put the uh, help uh, enabled. You can see the first Grand Prix, Bahrain in 11 days, I think. Uh, this is race weekend. Uh, yes. This is the balance that you have, 25 million. And the uh, drivers, constructors, sorry, teams, objectives here once again. The two drivers, this upcoming events. And then you have here, for example, inbox. Welcome, Johnny Wonka. This is your new inbox, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. You have here the calendar. For example, these are important things. Aerodynamic testing period ends. This perhaps now is not, uh, is not important. However, it will be important in the following seasons as you will be developing the car all the time for this or the following season. Uh, you have here what? Pre-season testing results. So you will not take part on that but uh, th your car will be tested there. You have sponsorship obligations, which means uh, nothing for you, just uh, things that give you money, you don't participate. You can choose to change the things that you want to do and how many uh, manpower and uh, money you want to invest on that for the following seasons, which of course, if you invest a lot of in sponsorship uh, obligations, you will get more money, however, there are things that you will have to sacrifice, such as, for example, if a driver goes to do some something uh, for, I don't know which sponsor, which you cannot choose, by the way. That's one of the things I really don't like about the game. 
uh, means that this driver will not be gaining experience in the simulator, which they are losing development. So everything can be sacrificed. And there you go for the first Grand Prix, second Grand Prix in Abu Dhabi, sorry, Abu, no Abu Dhabi, um, in Jeddah, in uh, Saudi Arabia, whatever. You have the full calendar here, they tell you uh, what to expect from the race, right? Uh, the, the temperatures, the weather, track abrasiveness high, so you can choose what uh, tires to use, safety car chance 100%, pit lane time loss 25 seconds in case you want to make a strategy, the lap record from 2005 still, those V10 cars, right? Resistance. You have all, and here they tell you how much tires you will have, right? All the race tracks in the calendar. So for the race, this is uh, overview, circuit map. They tell you here where the DRS zones and everything. There are three sections by speed. So you can kind of try to see how to set up the car, which you will have to do. You can do it in automatic, but it will not be as accurate as if you do it manually, for example. The car attributes should have all these things for the racetrack in able to be a good car over there. Safety car, no deployments, strategies, expected strategies. For example, you will see here that making one stop is not going to be an option because the racetrack is very abrasive, right? So you have softs, hards and soft, soft, medium, soft soft hard medium compound performance you can see here the, 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 the performance of each tire how it's gonna be lewis hamilton powertrain usage so you have all these things here performance targets this is so you can get money from the sponsors right Target, potential reward, 1 million, incentive. Incentives are something to give you extra money, however, it can also cost you money if you don't meet those incentives, right? For example, if here I put rich Q3, the potential reward is gonna be 1 million. If I put rich Q2, which is more realistic, the money will go up. And then if I put like, I want to make a, I don't know, pole position. Sorry, the other way. With the second, and if I put two drivers, you see the money is going up a lot, right? But we will not do that because we have a McLaren and we cannot reach that. So let's take this off and let's make uh, reach to Q2 for now. Let's make it simple. Finishing, finishing position, you're expected to finish 10th, so they can give you this money. Fastest lap, you're not gonna do it, so it doesn't matter. And hot targets. For qualifying position streak, for example, you're expected to be 12th in two races in a row. Finishing, finishing position streak, you can add this and you will see that there's 300 added. Right? So if you put 10th for two drivers, it will go even higher. Right? So let's not go into those things for now let's see how the team develops how the car performs where we can achieve to stay and then we can actually choose where to put this hot streak target thing and then you have a driver overview and car builds you have the car you have the car number one they tell you here all the parts that are fitted the powertrains you will have this And same for car 2, car analysis. Here you can actually compare your car with another car of the field. For example, Alpha Tauri should be one of the rivals, right? And here you can see the comparison between the performance of both cars. Top speed, the Alpha Tauri is faster. The acceleration, the Alpha Tauri is faster. Low speed, medium speed, high speed, you have the advantage. With the DRS, top speed, they still have the advantage, acceleration is the same, and anyway, blah, 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 so on, so on, so on. If you compare it, for example, with uh, Williams, you will see that you win with everything, so you can more or less see where your car is gonna be staying. If you compare it with Ferrari, you lose at everything, right? Ferrari had a much better car, if you compare it with Red Bull, more of the same. Here you can develop the cars. Research is to develop what next season is gonna be. However, the regulations has not uh, been established yet. So 
you can still be developing the car from this season at this point. Why later, if you want to, for example, focus 100% in developing the car from next year, you can come here, you develop this, and you forget about this. Manufacture, once you design the parts, you manufacture them. The researched ones, you cannot manufacture them yet. You have to wait until the following season to do that. But anyway, let's start designing some car parts, right? In this year's car, the underfloor is very important, so let's start doing that. Here, you can see that you have amount of hours and you have wind tunnel hours, right? You have 5.1 hours remaining until 56 days pass. What does this mean? Then you can use up to 5.1 hours of uh, simulation until 56 days and then it will be restarted the same thing for this you have 68 hours and you can restart it after 56 days of course the more hours that you use you will see here for example if i put one hour you will see that these things are improved however if i put for example all the hours you will see that all these green spaces start showing up showing up blowing up right you can improve the top speed to this rate you can improve the acceleration to this rate and all these other things. However, let's not waste everything in one. And let's put, uh, I don't know, 2.1, 2.5. Let's split it half and half. And let's, how many hours do we have? 60, let's put 35, 34. Here you can actually see that you can change this and sacrifice. You can make it balanced and everything will be improved a little bit or you can improve, for example, low speed downforce a lot and you will sacrifice something from the others. So it depends on what you're trying to improve, right? If your car is losing, if you have a high top speed, top speed and you have a low top speed in cornering, for example, or in dirty air and you want to improve that a lot you will do a lot and you will see that you will go from 21 to 25 and the rest will not be improved a lot let's make it balanced for now and then here you will see how many engineers you can put so let's uh, do two projects for now approach is going to be normal you can put it rushed which will cost money and you can make it intense which will cost even more money the total cost is here Crash remaining, cost cap remaining. Remember that in F122 you have the cost cap, the famous cost cap Christian Horner was complaining about. And you can see if you make it, it's gonna be. However, this is kind of interesting. You put in tens, it's the most expensive one. But uh, still, the delivery time is 40, 54 days. Crashed, it's 36. And normal. Your engineers will finish the project as soon as they can without rushing. Extra hours to finish the project. Higher cost, faster, completion time, but lower expertise gain. Of course, everything has its thing, right? The cost will be higher, but you will gain a greater car part expertise bonus, which will improve future designs of this car part. Let's make it normal for now. Let's make it cheap, right? And let's design also the 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 rear wing let's design the rear wing as well let's put this amount of hours let's improve everything a little bit let's make it like that let's put five engineers good you can see here the current project in designing manufacturing zero research zero everything is in design right let's go let's leave the drivers to the end you have the warehouse here where you can see for example the car parts fitted in each car right right now we only have one spec of each part so that's it engines you have three engines for the whole season which should be enough you have ers which you have two blocks for each driver and then you have gearboxes which you have for of course the fresher the the gearbox or the engine or the other one it's uh, better However, 
if you go over the limit you will have to get penalized drivers the staff technical chief you can have uh, development points you will get development points as uh, you continue to design stuff or after the races you will have uh, they will give you like one point or whatever which you can use to improve the engineer's uh, ability he's like 74 if you go to the market you will see that there are others right scout for a replacement you see here red bull has an 83 engineer you have ferrari you have uh, this guy which uh, is in Haas. okay look at that they have a really good designer uh, anyway the same thing for head of aerodynamics 75 race engineer 79 race engineer 79 each for each driver you have here the amount of uh, years remaining and uh, for example if i wanted to here they will tell you position years remaining salary it's 1 million per year cost to break the contract is 1.5 million which uh, you will have to pay plus the incentive that you will have to pay to the engineer that comes in because usually you pay a bonus to join your team engineering team the maximum size right now is 10 out of 10 engineers the more engineers you have the faster you can design or the faster you can manufacture other stuff right uh, this can change with the level of design centers which right now is 2 out of 5 if you have 5 out of 5 you can actually have 25 if I'm not mistaken scouting team to see how many scouts you have to scout uh, engineers or whatever or drivers which right now will not be very important and the pit crew here you have training focus balance you can try to enhance some uh, adjustment wing adjustment or whatever which will help you to uh, lose less time in specific area or if you want all of them to be more or less same scout key staff which we don't want to do right now and facilities you have for example operation facilities boardroom if you build a boardroom will cost you 400,000 and you can improve race confidence gain for uh, drivers and engineers and you will make the team more attractive let's build this because it will help to be able to negotiate with other drivers and everything you have hospitality area which right now you can see if you try to improve it to level two team attractiveness will be getting well however monthly upkeep is gonna be seventy five thousand let's leave that for now the weather accuracy this is important for the race so you can actually know when it's gonna rain when it's gonna be not raining because rain is kind of a pain in the ass in many races if you're not paying attention the helipad is so you can get more money from the sponsors here you have sponsor target payout plus two percent if you improve it it's three percent which can be quite some money here morale of the team it can be improved and to center also welcoming income weekly income 23,500 and staff facilities team hub here you can weekly experience gain of the staff 20% if you improve it would be 40% which could be quite important let's so let's improve this scouting team right now I don't want scouts and race simulator this is important for the drivers to get experience every week why do I want to develop this because uh, the young drivers that have high potential of developing can actually be gaining points almost every week depending on their performance right if a young driver that you are hiring for example that we will do uh, can gain experience every week then you will have development much faster factory so you can manufacture parts faster design center which is kind of important 11 million <coughs> uh, so you can design project capacity it will go from two to three uh, right now we are not very interested for that engineer capacity we would be interested in improving that 11 million it's a huge amount of money the wind tunnel will help you to improve things much faster effects gain right 
like airflow, it will go from 0.018% to 0.026%. This is kind of important. And uh, we should be developing this. So let's upgrade this so we can see improvements in the future. This is going to be the same. Suspension simulator, so you can have brake cooling and car part testing, so you can improve the engine cooling and the brake cooling. So anyway, that's more or less uh, what you have in the game, the board confidence. Here you have the analysis of the board of your performance. You are expected uh, to be fourth. You have a long-term uh, objective of fourth. Now you're expected to be fifth or above. However, if you don't meet it in the first season, it doesn't matter as long as you don't make a horrible season because the one that is important is the long-term season to see if you can actually make it or not have the budget here you have some budget 60 million initial payment blah 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 I have a team rating where I think the maximum should be 1000 and uh, you can see here that this is not very important for now the profile seasons steam principal best construction finish blah 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 this is for yourself Rules and regulations, we don't care about that. Season balance, right now we didn't spend a lot of money. You can see here the break cost, total, minus 10, minus 58, but we didn't start anything yet, so we don't really care. We don't really care about that because right now we are making quite a money every single race, you will be gaining like three or four million. It doesn't matter if you do it well or not, you will still get paid that amount. Right, so the game in that sense is kind of easy, at least in the beginning. Monthly balance, there you go, cost cap, and sponsorship. This is what I was talking about in the beginning. You cannot do this this season, but for the next season you will have other things added here, which will be merchandising, for example. You can pay more money so you can sell more units and you will get more in return but you will have to pay more in the beginning. Race simulation events, which means that you have, you can get more money. However, probably the drivers will get no experience for some time, which is something you will have to sacrifice for more money. Race hospitality, more or less the same thing for the staff. Memorabilia room and all these things. They do it here, memorabilia room. Morale boost will be paused. The morale is actually something important because if they are depressed, they are not performing on the end. Here you have standing, which right now it's as it is. I actually wanted to get rid of Daniel Ricardo. However, firing Ricardo will cost you 9 million. So we will not do that for now. What we will do is fire this guy because we don't need him and we will hire somebody who's actually uh, with a grow potential, with a high grow potential. So let's look for a replacement. Let's place it like this and we actually will go for someone in the F2, but we will try to find someone young like Jack Duhan, for example. Jack Duhan, we didn't scout him, however, he should have a high grow potential. And uh, he... We don't know anything about this guy. Anyway, let's try to hire the guy. Starting bonus, race target bonus. Let's put him finishing 10th. Or we will not... Uh, we will put it as a reserve driver. So in the first year, while Ricardo is running out the contract, he can be gaining experience in the FP1s. And let's put uh, three seasons, four seasons. And let's make some interesting offer. Let's put uh, 200,000. Let's see if he accepts. He's happy, but not with the money. Okay, let's give him 300,000. He's young, he will not demand a lot of money. But he's not happy with the salary, but he accepted the contract, right? You can see here, for example, that patience is high. Patience means that he will 
be going back and forth with the contract more times than somebody that is very impatient. Negotiation attitude open to negotiation, which means it's, which means it's somebody that wants to join the team or is open to join the team. So let's hire the guy and get rid of stuff of Van Dorn. And there you go. So we will use him in <coughs> free practice one. And here, for example, you are McLaren. So Verstappen, Verstappen wants to join. Okay. However, it's going to be a very expensive driver. Hamilton is not interested. Leclerc is interested. And you can see George Russell is not interested. But most of the other drivers are interested. Sebastian Vettel, no. Who is it? Kevin Magnussen, not interested. And all the other drivers are interested. If you choose Williams, most of, the driver, most of these drivers will not be interested. But if you choose a Ferrari, everybody is going to be interested. So let's continue for now. And there is a request, car developing key staff, okay, welcome Jack Tuchan to the team, sponsorship obligations, which we don't care, and kick off party, improve driver morale, improve staff morale, you lose 10,000, let's lose 10,000, which is not a lot of money, and you have some benefits from that. So the boardroom has been complete, Bahrain, okay. Let's see what the boardroom does. If we want to upgrade it, raise confidence gain. So the board actually will be happier with you with an extra 10%. Let's, uh, let's improve it for the, no, actually, let's improve this. The weather accuracy is more important for now and let's try to save to improve the big stuff which is the wind tunnel and all the other stuff so we're getting closer to Bahrain and let's see what the race can do for us right the first season we don't have a lot of pressure so let's just go into it. Here you have the weather predictions, which is dry, of course, sponsorship obligations, reminded, overview, let's go here. Uh, let's put Jack Duhan gaining experience in FP1 already, you have Lando Norris. And let's start testing. You can actually play with this, you can see that if you change the angle, things change, right? You change the rear wing angle. You can see that straight speed of oh, oversteer, sorry. These things don't change much. So let's start uh, guessing what to do with this before you go. Why? Because if you do it now, you don't lose time of the free practice. If you do it when you're in the free practice, you will lose some time to change everything. Changing like the wing angles doesn't take a lot of time but changing all the other these three things will cost a lot of time. So it's better if you start goofing around from the beginning. You want uh, to have some straight line speed, I guess. So low angle, what is uh, this? Let's put it to the left, why not? Let's modify this a little bit and this the other way. Yeah, why not? We don't know what they are thinking, so let's do this. Lando Norris apparently would like to have some oversteer. Let's uh, do this as well. To see like this, then you, they will give you the feedback, and we can actually see what they think about the car. We will use hards because we want them to do many laps, fifteen laps each. So let's go to it. You can manage it yourself. You can simulate the session, and if you don't given S, you can just go to the qualifying directly and the drivers will try to set up the car by themselves, which means actually it has a high chance that it will not be even close to 100%. Getting 100% is very difficult. If you can get a driver to have like 90 something percent confidence in the setup, it's amazing. If you have uh, 80, it's okay. 70, 60, it's really bad. So let's manage the first uh, practice session so you can try to get most of this, let's get Norris out first and then Duhan. Sessions should be starting now. And let's just put it in speed 16 to try to accelerate things. 
What do we have here? This also is the menu that you will have during the race. You, so you have the track conditions, the temperature. Here, for example, you have the weather prediction. In four minutes, there is a 5% chance that it will rain. Uh, this is amount of rain. It's, if it's two millimeters, you can go for inters. If it's more than that, you can go for wets. It will be up to seven millimeters if it's like really wet. And they will not stop the race, so it's okay. Track rubber very low, which means the grip is going to be not very good. And yeah, here you can see the prediction. I don't know what this is. The drivers, you can see car setup, no, cut parts knowledge, setup confidence. As the lap goes by, you can see that, the car and the track. During the race, you will see here the tire performance. So yeah, and here you have the whole thing, like standings, session, driver, constructions, you don't care about but this. The tires, you can see all the tires everybody has, the amount of laps, the percentage, sectors, last lap, interval, leader, lap history of the drivers. Each driver, actually, you can analyze while, how they are doing. Tire history, you can see how much events, yellow flags or anything, nothing is happening. And London Norris went wide, which are things that happen, like if they are pushing or not pushing, they are more prone to make mistakes or not. So let's keep it like this. Oh, they already went back to the pits. I like to keep it like this so you can see what's happening on the track. So let's see, car setup confidence 10%. So Lando Norris is very unhappy. Everything is bad. Okay, so let's go the opposite way then. Let's make it like this, change this to here. Okay, let's go all the way to the other side. And let's see what he thinks about it now. You can see that this will cost 4 and 45 minutes. The tires, it's the hard tires, so we don't need to change and we are not wasting soft tires. Let's see Jack Duhan. Jack Duhan is actually quite happy, 68% of confidence. So he thinks the oversteer is good. Let's try to give him some more high speed, for example. Right. Let's change this the other way, if we can, without compromising. This is great. This is great. So how can we change it? Let's go it that way and see what he thinks. So you can either wait at one or you can accelerate it. So things happen much faster. <clears throat> and you can see here more or less, it's the first free practice. So we're using the hard tire. You can change here to see who, what everybody is using. You can see people, some people are using the hard tire as well. The sectors of each driver. Oh, we can go out, send them out. The last lap of each driver, laps of each driver, the interval to the previous driver, be the leader, and let's go back. I like to keep it like this so you can see actually where you are towards the cars around you, or either like this to see how far you are from the leader, which we are quite far. It's not good, so I don't want to get depressed. Let's keep it here. Here you have the car parts uh, analysis, right? Well, here, first of all, you can change them to go full attack, which will consume more tire, or conserve, which will consume less tire, depends on what your strategy is for the race or for the qualifying or to make a lap. The engine, it will wear the engine more and you will actually consume more fuel. And since you know, you have a maximum of 110 kilos in the car, so you have to manage that. And you have the ERS systems. You can deploy it, which will consume uh, two megajoules, but uh, your times will be much faster. Here you have the, the car parts, right? How the, the wheels are performing on each side. You have the engine, ERS, gearbox, power train temperature, which is not bad. And chassis, no damage, whatever, avoid the curves. Driving clean air, you can tell the driver what to do in the race. You can call them to the pits. Let's let's check how London Norris is doing. Okay, we're it's an improvement. 74. We went to, from 10 to 74. 
So he should be... You have to try to keep it within these lines so it can be perfect. And you can see that before it was wider and now it's thinner, which means you're getting closer to the perfect setup. So everything is good. This is great, which means when it's great, you should try to keep uh, close to the green line. Since we know that this is here, we should try to aim for the left, right? Let's try to give him a little bit more of uh, straight line speed. And let's try to go this way to see what he thinks. Let's not make a lot of changes. Four minutes once again. We still have tire left. No, we don't. So let's, uh, let's make less laps. Right. Oh, you have two minutes remaining of the of the session. Anyway, you can already make the changes. Oh, look at him. He's very happy. Great. Optimal. Optimal is the target of what you should be aiming for. So let's try to change something like this to keep it there. We'll change this here. And that should be it. We don't have more session time, so let's keep it there. And we will finish free practice one with a actually kind of a good setup start. Lando Norris has a 70% happiness, which should be probably improved in the next practice sessions. So where are we? 15 and 16, quite far from the target but we are in the hard tires while others were using medium and softs and we were not pushing either. So car development 500, trough acclimatization 35%, car parts 25, 25, setup should be more than 70 because we know that he's kind of happy with that and this one we don't know because we didn't test it. So now Daniel Ricardo comes to the car and he doesn't know it because first of all we did change some setup so he will have to get used to it. So let's see. Let's uh, simulate to see what happens. It's going to be quite fast. And look, you can see where you are. Lando Norris is 11, so this is more or less the position that you are going to be in. And Daniel Ricardo is 15th. You can see setup confidence. Daniel Ricardo has 93%, which is very good. And setup confidence, Lando Norris, 81. So we go into the next day. It's sunny. Free practice three. Let's see what we can change in Landon Norris's car. So he would like to have less straight line speed. Let's put it there. Optimal. Let's let's leave it like this. And he is happy with everything. Look at that. Let's leave it like that. Let's not touch anything because it's 93%. We should try to aim for more. But anyway, we're not fighting for the championship, so we don't really care. Let's uh, simulate the session once again to go faster. And uh, you can see the London Norris is P14. This is P16. Now he's 90%, so we are in a good position. And the uh, qualifying. So let's leave the cars like that and let's uh, let's make the qualifying. Usually I skip it because it's the first season, so I don't really care. So let's uh, let's leave it from some other drivers to go out first and try to make some laps, put some grip, and then we can go out. Of course, the traffic will influence, and for the race, for example, the DRS is a pain in the ass because you will be overtaking, getting overtaking, lap in, lap, lap out, so... Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's actually send Norris out. You can see this if you want, of course you can. There, there goes the McLaren, you can actually put the camera on Norris if you want as well, right? You can see it here. Maximum speed is two. If you put four, you will actually go to this screen. And let's put automatic in the first lap to see how they do. And we can try to put it manual in the second lap. So Norris is P9 and Ricardo is 17. Wow, that was really bad. 
So I think Lando Norris should be safe. Let's leave it in box for now. <coughs> Copy. And let's try to pass the qualifying with Daniel Ricciardo. Let's put another soft tire since uh, <laughs> he doesn't. Let's do it like this. Okay. And let's uh, wait like one minute so he can have. Let's go. And let's put the camera on him. Let's put it in manual. So let's go like this for now. <coughs> We have 100% battery, which is good. We're saving fuel, which is good. We're not wasting temperature on the tires. However, we do have a driver in front of us. Oh, we don't like Lurk, so it's going back. Parfait. And now, let's pause it and push like hell. We have... Oh my god, look at Verstappen. <laughs> look at the difference in the speed. Right? And here you can actually change the camera to the front wing, to the driver. Right? In like in F1 game or in the TV. So you can see that Verstappen is actually quite faster than we are. Which is something that we know. But uh, yeah, our aim should be to score some points in some races, and uh, and that should be it for the first season. If I could, I would get rid of Ricardo and I would put Jack Duhon there so he can start gaining experience during the races and everything. The more time he's in track, the more experience he will gain and you can improve his statistics. Okay, so it looks like Ricardo might have a chance. Let's uh, speed it to see. Yes, we did. There we go. So we pass with both drivers. Now getting into Q3 is going to be much more complicated. So let's uh, try and do it. And once again, we shall wait until it's like 10 minutes. Let's let all the other drivers go out first. Or, what we could do, it's, uh, this is for the race, let's, this is for the race, let's go with the medium first. Since he doesn't have another tire, let's send him out and let's send Lando out as well. So, Oh, oh, oh. Let's take control, deploy, maximum power, okay. Let's also take control from Lando. He's getting there. So let's put maximum power. Power! And let's see where they are. Okay, so he did the lab. Let's put conserve, conserve, harvest. And there comes Lando. And Norris is 1.1 seconds. Okay. Let's harvest. So now you can see, for example, why the drivers usually make one fast lap and then they stop because they have to recharge the batteries. We have the radio, which actually makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So let's go back to the pit lane. Right, let's put the soft tire in Mr. Rick. And let's wait for Lando to come back. Let's keep that tire. For now, let's save this one, these two for the race, because we will do a two-stop. 
we are in P9 and doesn't look like this other driver. Maybe Hamilton and Russell actually are going to improve. So let's keep it like this for now. And uh, let's wait a little bit and send Daniel Ricciardo out. And let's risk it with Norris as well, with the used tire. Let's put it in automatic to see how they do. Okay, Alcon is faster than us. Oh, and we didn't pass with any driver. <laughs> Interesting, P13 and 14. Well, risks have consequences, right? Anyway, that's more or less where we are, what should be expected. We should be fighting for P10 in the race, if we can. So let's see how we do. So what do we have for the race day? We have a sunny day, of course. Results. This is how the grid looks like. In qualifying, right? Reports, overview. Anyway. So look at this. Oh my god, this is so bad. We can only bring 100 kilos. How many laps are there? 57 laps. And we can only put enough fuel for 55.7 laps, which means we will have to save fuel during the race. Of course, each engine has different specs. It's like Mercedes perhaps uh, saves more, more fuel, like the Honda or the Red Bull powertrains is faster, more powerful, but it will consume more fuel as well. So you can also check those things. In, in the beginning of the next season, because for this season you cannot do anything. At the beginning of the season, if you're not a constructor like Ferrari, Mercedes, you will be able to choose the engine supplier. So let's see the strategies. You can actually change the strategy here if you want to add laps or put laps or put a new stint or whatever you wish. Uh, the hard one, you can actually compare here, for example, estimated race time. Right? This one is slower, this one is slower. However, it's a little bit safer, right? You will have more rubber at the end of the tire, of the stint. And you can actually push harder with a hard tire. However, it's a slower tire. So let's do this one with uh, Ricardo because he should be the slower driver. Let's do the aggressive one with Norris since he should be aiming for a higher finishing position. Safety car and all these things that we don't really care. And let's see where they go. You can try to make him push a little bit in the first meters or so. Let's put the camera on Norris. And let's see where things stand. Ocon will go first. We are ahead of Ocon. That is good. Let's speed up a little bit. And let's put it in balance now, now that we are ahead. And once again, let's put it like this. And uh, there's no rain expected, so we can actually go really fast. And you will see here, for example, saving fuel, like putting it in balance, you will, you will not be using a lot of fuel. So at the beginning of the race, if you're minus one, minus two, minus four, it doesn't matter because you can save fuel by the end of the race. And now comes the big problem here. You will see, let's make it like this. You have Zhou Guangyu in number 10. Yeah, he's three seconds behind. And now you have Magnus and Ocon and Norris and possibly Ricardo as well. And then you have Mick Schumacher. So you have all these drivers depending on Zhou Guangyu. So probably Magnussen will overtake Zhou Guangyu. And then in the next lap, Zhou Guangyu will overtake Magnussen. And all these other drivers will be trapped behind without being able to overtake. Like you can see here, for example, Norris is losing time to Ocon. They will get to the first corner. Maybe Magnussen will overtake. No, he didn't. Which means now you can get closer again. And it's gonna be like that all the races. So you can do a couple of things there. You can either try to save fuel or not waste energy of the car. And then when you have clean air, you can try to go for it. You will see that uh, Leclerc went wide, Stroll locked up, which means they will lose like three seconds or five seconds or whatever. And it's gonna be like this for the race. You can see here the stints 
You can see here the weather prediction more or less. Ricardo and Norris both are saving the tire. Pit window for laps. So that's what we have so far. You can see Magnussen, Ocon, Joe, and now Joe Guan Yu actually caught Alonso because he made a mistake, right? So now we have Alonso, Ocon, Joe, Magnussen, Norris, Ricardo, and Mick Schumacher in the DRS train. You can see the four cars are ahead of everybody. Then you have then you have two Mercedes, Gasly, and Bottas, and then you have the rest. So let's go to pits with uh, Ricardo. Let's put the hard tire. Norris is trying to overtake Magnussen, however, he will not. Because Magnussen also has the DRS. So what we do now is Daniel Ricciardo will go into pit lane. Let's speed it up a little bit. And you can see that he will go out behind Hamilton. What happened to Hamilton? And now we can actually push. We can try to push a little bit at the beginning of the stint, new tires. And let's see what Norris can do. Norris lost the DRS to Ocon? No. However... And box now, attack the pit lane. Yeah, confirm. Happy to box at the end. Okay, so let's keep going. We have the DRS from Ocon. We overtook him. And we will do the same thing now when we go out. You will see that we were behind Joe Wang Yu and Alonso. Let's see where we come out. Are we coming out in front of Joe? We are behind Alonso, in front of Alonso. How about that? So now that we're here, we can actually put it in standard mode for now and there are a couple of things that we can do now now that Norris is ahead of Alonso we can actually tell him to push be a little bit aggressive and deploy the battery to try to make some gap to Alonso and try to catch Hamilton you can see that the difference to Hamilton so now that we are closer we can actually tell him to slow down and now we have the DRS train from Lewis Hamilton so we're in P8 sorry P9 and Hamilton okay so we are in P10 actually and Hamilton has the same tire as us I don't know what nice went wrong with uh, with Hamilton Hold on, mate. and the bad thing is that Alonso got close enough that he has the toe from Hamilton so that's more or less how we are right now. We will be in the DRS train with Hamilton and Alonso. So we are in the points or fighting for the points. We have Bodas in front of us. And McLaren with a great overtake. Right, and what we see here, Ricardo is actually saving some fuel. We are three seconds behind. How are the safe? Oh, he's managing the tires quite okay. Let's make him push a little bit. And if he can overtake Joe Guang Yu, let's make him push to try to gain some distance to Joe. And of course he did it. Anyway, looks like we're not going to be catching Bottas, or we are. 2.4 seconds before we were 3, right? Oh, and now we are behind Alonso. <laughs> okay, Alonso went past Hamilton, and now we're going to be stuck in there for some time. The most important thing for the race to manage is that you don't lose the DRS. Because if you're out, you're out. Like you will not fight that position anymore, and you will have to be using more engine to try to recover that amount of time. And now, look at that. Alonso is on the toe of Bottas. Bottas is almost on the toe of Russell. And we are Norris. Joe, when you is much behind, 
so we should try to be in that position for the race. We're saving fuel, so we're okay. And perhaps now we can overtake Hamilton. Yes, we can. And Bottas as well? No. And actually, we lost a lot of time there. And that is not good. Okay, so with the Hamilton, you can see that when you pass the other one, you can actually passing and repassing. You can keep gaining time with the people ahead, right? So that's more or less where we should try to be for the last stint of the race. Looks like that was a position gain for Alfa Romeo. So it looks like Ricardo is going to be fighting for 11th position and with Norris we shall be trying to aim for a points position. <coughs> and the best thing that we might be able to gain is a P5 by Alonso. We caught Gasly, which is good. However, we are at the back of the DRS train. We don't have a car, to be honest, to be fighting for these positions. So a P10 for the first race should be good. If we can actually aim for more, should be even better. Was that a on the track? Here, you can see that you're getting close to the pit window, right? And now we shall go in for a new set of softs for the last stint of the race. We still have DRS. Sounds like someone's locked up. There we go, we will go into the pit lane now. Our aim should be to try to come out where Hamilton is, so we can have the DRS train. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Hamilton goes by, Alonso. Okay, so now we have to try, we will push a little bit, burn some engine and deploy the ERS system to try to catch Hamilton and his DRS, his juicy DRS. Can we? Can we? And now we don't have ERS anymore. And looks like we are there. Ricardo should be getting close to pitting in this lap. Oh, we caught Gasly, not Hamilton, okay. But anyway, Hamilton doesn't have DRS, so probably we can aim to catch him. We overtook Russell, and Hamilton looks like it's escaping from us. And now we are stuck in the DRS train once again. Let's push with Ricardo. Let's push with Norris. There we go. Hopefully, Gasly and Norris can be fighting for the same stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Why, why? Oh my god, he didn't pit. Why not? Let's put the soft tire for him. Box this lap. Box this lap. That was a big mistake. Yep. Box kept on. Why? 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 It was a two-stop. Why they didn't call him in? I don't understand. Is that a, like a game mistake? So we lost the position with Joe and with Ocon now. So let's try to push a little bit. We have more rubber. 
And let's go like that. So we are fighting for P6 with Gasly. We don't have ERS to try to escape, and even if we escape, the people in the DRS train behind us are gonna catch us very quickly, so no point on trying to gain anything there. So what we have to try to aim, actually, is to come to the last lap behind Gasly in this section, so we can overtake him and aim for that P6 finish. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. Oh, Russell is gaining. So now we're getting to the last lap. We will overtake Gasly. Yes, we will. So now push like hail, mate. We have 34% of rubber left. Let's try to go as fast as we can. And yeah, we lost position with Gasly. Can we try to get to the finish line before him? No. P8. P7? P7. There you go. So, first race, points position, not bad at all. They are celebrating, which means it's good. Not bad at all, Lando Norris, by very few, so close. And we were not so far from Hamilton either. Huh? Look at that, we actually caught him in the end. Ah, no, this is the, <laughs> sorry, the best time. We were two seconds off, guys, uh, Hamilton. So not bad, we only got beaten by one Mercedes and the Alfa Tauri of uh, Gasly. Right? Not a bad data review, what is... Oh. Not a bad uh, lap history. How about that tire history? Everybody went more or less in the same, same thing. Here, I really don't know what the hell happened and why they didn't call him in. Because there was no notification for that. I don't know if that's a game bug or what. But yeah, fastest lap. My drivers. Ricardo and Norris, lap 21, lap 56. How about that? Two seconds faster than Norris. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, how about that? I did the lap record. Fastest lap? Not bad. Oh, because I was not in the top 10, they didn't give me the point. Anyway. So we are P5 in the Constructors Championship, which in theory we are meeting the objective, right? Here, they will show you the experience and everything that they are gaining from the weekend here you have the money that you're gaining which is almost four million this race even if you do a horrible weekend you will still gain money so it's okay so that was uh, race one hope you enjoyed it and see you for the second race hopefully it will be much faster and we can make maybe two or three races per round see you next time